All right, so let's get started here with our final, final review for Unit 6, our very last unit, uh, dealing with the Contemporary Era, uh, which runs from 1900 to the present day. Uh, there's going to be three major key concepts that we're going to focus on for each one of these review videos. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one, dealing with science and the environment. So we see that there's going to be a very rapid advancement of technology and scientific breakthroughs throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. One of the ways we see this is in the forms of communication. We now, of course, have instantaneous communication with the development of the radio and then the phone then the internet, and then, of course, the cell phone. Uh, at the same time, we see that we have faster and faster transportation, including uh, uh, cars and faster trains and, of course, airplanes. And the effect of this is that uh, geographic distance is, becomes less of an issue, right? Where in the past, it might have taken you months to sail around the world. Now it could take you, you know, a couple of hours uh, to fly around the world. And communication, you know, in the past might have taken months. Now it takes, you know, less than a second. Uh, so geographic distance becomes less of an issue thanks to new advancements in technology and communication and transportation we also see a lot of new understandings of the world and of the universe uh, so things about the theory of relativity relativity which is of course albert einstein's famous discovery uh big bang theory advancements in psychology which begins you know uh in the early 1900s um also about quantum mechanics and uh, the atoms, uh, DNA, uh, you know, breakthroughs in understanding the human genome, uh, and um, and you know stuff like chromosomes and DNA and all that stuff, all that science stuff. Uh, so a lot of new advancements, right? We are understanding more and more how the world works, how the universe works, how the human body works. Uh, here are some famous um, scientists of this era. Uh, in the early 1900s, including Albert Einstein, uh, Marie Curie, some of the people I really don't know. Anyways, uh, Green Revolution. Green Revolution started in the 1950s, uh, but especially, you know, 1970s, 1980s, we see it kind of explode. And this is an explosion in food production. So now more and more land on Earth is being used to produce more and more food than ever before in world history. More land is being used for cultivation, uh, which, of course, as we've known throughout all of world history, the more food production there is the more population growth there will be and the uh, humanity's population has um skyrocketed in the last you know 60 70 80 years um and part of this is the use of chemical fertilizers uh and use of genetically modified or enhanced crops all right crops that are genetically immune or resistant to drought or resistant to uh, infestations and in in, you know crop disease so again population right starting with the in way 1950 right we have two and a half billion by you know seven years ago uh, 2010 we have seven billion right so more than double almost tripled in a period of 60 years and of course that's going to bring a lot of uh, environmental issues which we'll talk about in a second um, in addition to the massive increase of the green revolution of, of food production, uh, we also see that medical advancements, treatments, uh, have uh, also allowed more and more people to survive, right? So antibiotics and vaccinations, uh, surgeries, stuff like that, have become more, um, you know, more acceptable or more available uh, to people and therefore they get to live longer lives right and disease isn't going to immediately kill you um, like it would have you know 200 400 a thousand years ago uh, we also see that as the population grows there's going to be more and more demand for energy and uh, the the use of energy has increased with the population growth 
uh and you know so we go some places you know like we still use stuff like coal and natural gas uh of course we use oil and petroleum for you know fuel and many countries including the united states uh use nuclear energy as well uh to meet our needs so we do see that these are you know stuff like oil and coal these are non-renewable resources natural resources that we are depleting that we're using up that we're consuming uh nuclear energy um you know has its own drawbacks with you know radio radioactivity stuff so we do our we are human humanity is using more and more energy consuming more and more non-renewable resources now of course as the population keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh we're kind of messing up the earth, right? Uh, we are using more of our resources here on earth than ever before. Um, and to, to gain access to these resources, uh, we're doing a lot of more mining, right? Deeper and deeper and deeper underground. Uh, we're doing stuff like where we, uh, you know, fracking, which is you know, digging holes and uh, launching explosives underground. Uh, we do, you know, cutting off mountain tops to you know drill uh, or do mining on top of mountains uh we clear forests right of course we all t hear about the deforestation that's going on in the amazon rainforest right every day thousands and thousands of acres are being cut down uh and you know to to make way for farmland to make way for cultivation of crops and of course we know that you know we're using a lot of water as well so uh Again, you know, population growth is putting more and more strain on Earth uh, and consuming more and more uh, of our resources. Uh, we also see, of course, global warming become a major consequence. Uh, the increased amount of carbon dioxide and methane and other greenhouse gases um, basically is, uh, you know, trapping heat right the sun energies the sunlight's heat uh here on earth within our atmosphere and that is increasing the temperatures which is going to cause the ice caps to melt uh and bring catastrophic you know horrific things uh in the near future so we do see this quite a bit and pollution of course is a big big issue uh, speaking of pollution, we see that some places uh, have um, a lot of environmental degradation, right? Where there's a lot of air pollution. And there's famous pictures, of course, of places like in China, uh, in the capital of Beijing. The pollution can be so bad at times, uh, you know, that you can't even breathe it. You have to stay home. Uh, you can't even see the sky or the sun uh, because of how uh, polluted it is. Uh, water pollution is also another big problem uh, in China and of course many other places as well uh, where so much you know chemicals and toxins and other stuff is being dumped into the water supply uh, killing you know the fish which is you know messing up people's food supply um, or, or water supply as well deforestation we saw in Brazil uh, desertification we see in, in, in the Sahara Desert remember desertification is the growth or the expansion of deserts and the Sahara Desert is getting bigger every year more and more of Africa is uh, becoming desert when it, in the past it might have been you know grasslands of the savanna for example we see animal extinctions right um, the destruction of natural habitats is causing many animals to lose their, you know, where they live and where they survive, and they have gone extinct. And to add to that, of course, you know, we're hunting and killing them uh, as well. Uh, diseases. Let's talk about diseases. We have two kind of like major categories of diseases. Uh, we have kind of like the poverty diseases, uh, place things like malaria and cholera and tuberculosis. A lot of these diseases are treatable. Many of them are preventable. Uh, but because the poorer parts of the world, like Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, India, China, Southeast Asia, uh, these places lack the resources in many times uh, to prevent these diseases so it affects a lot of the poor people poor populations of the world 
Uh, we also see lifestyle diseases. Uh, these diseases have become um, treatable with you know medicine, modern medicine, uh, things like diabetes and heart disease, uh, cholesterol, cancer, that sort of stuff. Uh, they are treatable, uh, but many you know our lifestyle choices many times uh, cause us to fall sick to these diseases. Uh, keep in mind as well that in the even with all these technological and medical and scientific breakthroughs. Uh, we still have epidemics, right? Uh, we still have epidemics, including the famous influenza epidemic, right? The Spanish flu epidemic uh, that broke out immediately after World War I, killed more or almost as much people as the war did. Uh, from the 1980s, we see the HIV AIDS epidemic. Um, and, and, you know, it started in Africa and, and hits Africa and Latin America the hardest. Uh, but it, that's an epidemic because it's spread around the world as well. Uh, Ebola, a few years ago, Ebola was all the rage about epidemics. We still see that. Uh, so epidemics are still up and running, still killing people um, in the 20, 20th and 21st century. All right, so here we see some of those, um, uh, you know, some maps about the diseases, right? Which are the places that have the highest amount of, of you know, of these lifestyle diseases, right? Look how the United States, for example, has a lot of Alzheimer's disease. Now, remember, Alzheimer's is the deterioration of the brain. Um, and this happens as you get older and older and older, uh, higher in age. Uh, and since so many people live to their 80s and 90s, uh, more than ever before in history, right? Because life expectancy has gone so high nowadays that these type of diseases like Alzheimer um, continue to, you know, uh, to inflict a lot of people. Uh, diabetes, right? No surprise that the United States is one of the places that has the highest levels of diabetes uh, because of the lifestyle, the, you know, fast food consumption, uh, soft drinks consumption. There's no surprise that there's a, a connection there, right? Our lifestyle and our culture uh, causes us to be more vulnerable uh, to disease. All right, um, let's talk about birth control next. So um, other breakthroughs include birth control, um, contraceptives, right? Things that uh, give women the capability of controlling uh, when or if they get pregnant. Uh, and therefore, there has been uh, some ability for women to choose this. Uh, not every woman on earth has access to contraceptions. Many religions, of course, ban the use of contraceptions or ban the practice of abortion. Um, but basically, the, the availability of contraceptions and the legability or legality of abortions uh, has maintained the population from growing even more than what it already is. Um, of course, uh, with technological breakthroughs, we see uh, many times that technology is improved for the purpose of warfare. So we see improved military technologies, and the as we you know create these weapons to to kill people. Uh, we're going to see that there's going to be higher levels of wartime casualties than ever before, right? So, you know, World War One, we see the development of the tank and the airplane. World War II uh, and chemical war uh, warfare as well, right? Poison gas and mustard gas. Uh, World War Two, we see the use of nuclear weapons. And uh, we see the application of total war, right? Where you're targeting civilian populations, right? Bombing cities, killing and raping women like the Japanese army did to the Chinese in World War II, firebombing of Dresden, which was a German city that the Americans did, right? the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So because we have these new technologies that have become more and more destructive, war has become more and more deadly, more destructive, more casualties. And keep in mind, with total war, the, it's not just in the battlefield anymore. Civilians back at home in the home front are at a uh, at risk of getting killed as well All right, so here we see some images, you know these um, New technologies we just mentioned and that is pretty much it for part one I'll see you for the next part when we look at global conflicts
Thanks for watching.